Hey everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcoming you to episode 36 of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. And this square right here might not look too familiar right now, mostly because it's a sort of just ocean for the time being, but that might give you a clue as to where we are, the little silhouette over there. And uh, to give you more of a clue, let me outright show you. So if you don't know where we are by now, then I, I don't know what to tell you, man. But, yeah, so... If you saw the last video, which I assume you did, I think that's sort of safe to assume. What is going on with this? There's a bunch of barrels that just popped up in my way. There's a barrel in my face! Um, but yeah, so last episode we unlocked the Tower of the Gods, which is our fourth, third dungeon, actually. Sorry. And, uh, before I tackle that, I actually want to do a bit of sea exploration, just to kind of get some of it out of the way. We're mostly going to be doing the top portion of the map. Here's a Star Island, square B1, by the way. For, so, that's what we're going to be doing for now. I hear that somewhere in the wild world is a handy arrow that can freeze anything. With something like that, you could even freeze that nasty monster in the Forsaken Fortress. For a while, anyway. But then, what would you do with a frozen monster, you say? Good question, Fry. Well, I'd stick it on a stick and eat it. Why? I'd say you get that thing a whack and watch it shatter into teeny tiny pieces. I guess that's also plausibility. Alright, sweet, yeah, so, I do have a little bit of a root plant here. Oh, there's a treasure over there. I guess I'll get that while I'm here, too. Yeah, but I have a bit of a root plant that covers a large portion of the top, like, three or four rows of the map. So, we're gonna be go, go ahead and do that. Oh, looks like it's getting a little dark here. Oh, is it raining? Damn it, it is. <laughs> well, it's actually raining in real life, too, so I guess that's kind of a fitting. What am I doing? There's a Korok in the middle of the island here, kind of significant. That's, this is like the last Korok I normally get when I go and do that side quest, too. And it's a really epic one, because he's like right in the middle of the island, and it makes this huge-ass tree appear, like, right there. Hmm. Did I just hear mini blends? Uh, they're supposed to be... Maybe it's under that other rock. Shoot, because... <laughs> I, I thought this was like a rock, because I know one of these rocks has like a cave under it. That's the main purpose of this island. One of them has a blue chew jelly under it, and one has these freaking mini blend things under it. I don't get this. <laughs> Where are you guys coming from? This island is so small. Oh my god, there's so many of them too. Wow. Good at camouflage, eh? Not good enough, apparently, otherwise he'd be alive still. Did that guy just fall in the ocean and die? No, he's... <laughs> okay, apparently he did. I don't know, it looked like he was still hopping around and then just kind of exploded. I don't know what... Oh, there's still one over here. Uh, oh, they die when they touch the water? I didn't even know that. Okay, there's the cave, which is basically the only real thing we can do on the island at all. Other than that Korok, which you can't do for a while yet. Well, actually, we probably could do that right now, but, uh, it's not really worth my time right now to go out all the way out to Forest Haven, even though it's kind of just there to deposit my Nintendo gallery photos. But, uh, yeah, let's do this. I always liked this island, it was kind of cool. So it's just these little islands that, like, they don't serve really any significant purpose in the story. But they're just, like, small and have little neat things on them. Oh, hello. I stab you in the brain! Oh, God! Come on. Yeah, just like Phineas Gage, bitch. I don't know. Yeah, this is basically really the whole appeal of the game to me. Like, a lot of people say they really don't like this sea exploration thing, but I just don't get that, man. It's awesome. <laughs> he clasped at the air. Oh my god. I guess he was trying to nab that heart that was floating down, because he probably needed it. I love how much these guys sway their heads. It's so funny. Oh, I probably should have gotten that guy's joy pendant, shouldn't I? Well, I can still get this guy, so... How many joy pendants do I even have right now? 33, yeah. You need 40 overall, so... Might as well work on that. Only a few more to go, I guess. Mm, I'm gonna take your stick. I'm gonna take your stick and I'm gonna use it on your brother in here. <laughs> I'm bringing a stick to a machete fight. That actually doesn't sound that like that bad of an idea, and apparently it's not. But uh, I probably should be using this to... Oh, they blocked that, I forgot. Well, not, not always, I guess. There we go. He was stunned from his after attack and I got the blow in! Yes. Alright, you die. <laughs> he was charging for the weapon. He's like, what? Oh, oh, he's still alive. Oh my god. Normally they're not that resilient. I don't know what was going on there. Alright, any more for me? I love these little caves. There's actually one of these. I think it might be the one on Shark Island. 
that's actually like really nasty. It's kind of scary, to be honest with you. I'm gonna need a few of these skull necklaces too. I don't know if I've really pointed that out. Thank you. Boom, man. All right, this guy's gonna hurt me if I don't do something about him. Uh, see, when they do this like bow thrust thing though, that's like so weird because I don't know. Because like when they do that, they tend to block every single attack that you do. And it just sucks. Oh, I haven't gotten that guy's skull necklace yet. I didn't even realize. There we go. Oh, dude. <laughs> hey, when they do that little stab. The little dinky stab. Oh, he's just going bare-fisted on me. I've never seen one of them do that. They're normally, like, swinging at me with a massive spear or charging, at me, charging for a weapon to fight me with. There you go. I love how the rupees are at an angle there. As they were, like, flying through the air. You rarely ever see that, actually. Actually, I think that might be the first time I've seen that. I probably want to pick up these bombs because I noticed I was running low. By the way, if my rupee count is a bit off from last video, that's because on the way sailing from uh, the Forest Haven to here, I actually stopped and picked up a few of those like treasure rings, you know? Oh, a piece of heart, wow. That little bit for a piece of heart, really? That was like four Boca Blins and two Moth. Whatever. Okay, I'll take it if you're gonna give that to me. Yeah, but I picked up a few of those, like, little rings. Not the big ones that you get from treasure charts. Not, like, those ones over there, but just a, a few of the smaller ones. And I think I amassed about 150 or so rupees from that, so... It adds up, it really does. Where is my boat? <laughs> Come on, there's only, like, six points on this star. You can't... He has to be on one of them. Really? Is it gonna be the last one I check? Oh my god. There he is. Good lord. Oh, he's between points, I guess, so I guess. Whatever. Whatever, there's six in-between points, too, so what, I, I'm still technically right. Anyways, uh, I guess while we're here, we can actually go ahead and check out that, uh, treasure. God, I didn't realize how far they just, far away they start to disappear from. It should be right around here. Looks spatially correct to me. Yeah, it is. Ooh, yeah. By the way, you gotta watch out for those barrels that randomly pop out of the sea. You know, we were seeing those before. That's because we're so close to the Forsaken Fortress, and, like, I guess all their, like, explosive, like, barricades come up. And there's just a bunch of exploding barrels. He's not even looking at the camera, though, like he normally does. He's, like, looking above the camera at the seagulls or something. I don't know. Seagulls are a dime a dozen. Like, you don't really need to focus on those. Oh, I still haven't gotten the fish for this. Yeah, see these exploding barrels. You gotta st steer clear of those. These I these upright ones too. That if you run into those, they'll actually mess you up quite a bit. Mm, wait, no, I did get the fish, didn't I? Yeah, that's like the first thing I did. I just didn't. Okay, yeah, I guess I did. The one thing I have left to do in this square now is this platform over here. Uh, I gotta change the wind. By the way, something I learned, like, just on my way to this island, actually, is that if you hold up or down on the analog stick as you conduct the Wind Waker, it actually raises or lowers the volume of the song, which is really cool. I actually never noticed that, and, uh, it's just one of those little superfluous things that they didn't have to put in the game, but it's really cool that they did, just to make it a little bit more realistic or something, I guess. Because, mm, like, if, like you were conducting someone and you raised your finger like that all the way like skywards like look up here dumb shit and then they that does trigger them to play louder so there you go yeah no I don't, I don't even know how I figured that out I guess I was just just experimenting because like if you hold left and right obviously it changes the time so I was like well maybe up and down to something too kinda like how you can like hold the L and R buttons when you're playing the ocarina and that like changes the Wah wah on it or something. Yeah, you fall off the edge, you stoop. Actually, he might have had a joy pendant for me and I kind of let it sink to the ocean floor, but I don't really care. I got a gold feather, so I'm just going to tickle this guy's armpits with that and we'll be done here. Actually, no, I need this gold feather, so I'm going to keep your ranky armpits off. Is he? Dude, he is holding a machete and a telescope at the same time. Do you see that? That's awesome. That would make a great weapon in real life. Except you might stab yourself in the eye by accident, but okay. Whatever works for you, bud. I don't think breaking these cannons on here will yield much of anything, but I'm going to do just for good purpose. You know, just to keep the island clear, to keep this uh, square clear of pirates forever. Yeah, buddy. 
And with that, uh, oh, there's another treasure ring out there. I'm probably not going to pick those up, like, while I'm recording, because it's actually... Oh, I almost landed in the boat. That's one of the coolest things you can do, to jump from a platform and land in the boat. But, uh... Okay, what am I doing now? I was talking about that treasure... Yeah, I'm not going to pick those up mid-recording, because that would just take too much, uh, time for that. Anyways... I think I'm staying in the wrong direction. I think I want to go this way, actually. Yeah, right here. Because on my little uh, thing that I mapped out here, let me just check this. Um, you can probably hear the crinkling of the paper. Yes, yeah, Spectacle Island is next, which is one square north, uh, south, southeast of us, actually. Right over here. So, uh, I'll meet you there, I guess.